All right, so it's time again to be wrong, which is okay, because being wrong is just having an opportunity to learn, right? <laughs> so, okay. We're going to figure out how the anti-dead zone works. So basically, every game will apply a certain amount of dead zone to the middle position of the joystick. And the intention is to accommodate for things like wear and tear and, you know, maybe exaggerated misalignment for some reason, say if it's a really old controller or something like that. This joystick, even straight out of the box, will never actually sit at exactly zero. It'll always be in one direction or, or another. So the game's dead zone is meant to mitigate this and make it so resting in the middle is actually a resting position and won't uh, deliver any input to the game. Now, that's the, game, that's the game's native dead zone. What the anti-dead zone does is it allows you to basically shrink the game's dead zone however you want. So we could think of the game's dead zone like this. Say this represents a range of movement on the joystick from as far left as it can go to as far right as it can go, and that being the center. So if you think of this as a negative one and you think of this as a plus one, perhaps the game's own dead zone applies a dead zone to the middle to a radius of minus 0.25 and plus 0.25. So now a quarter of your movement isn't doing anything in the game. What the anti-dead zone allows you to do is to bring these inward by making the minimum value that the controller is sending to the game, for example, would be minus 25 right here on this side and then plus 25 here on that side. And the zero is no longer represented as a value that the game is receiving. So what this does is it basically extends the range of movement on either side. It stretches it out. And what this can do is it can make the stick more responsive. But this can actually be a problem because if you shrink this too much, you've essentially completely removed the resting position, and there is no resting position anymore. So even if it's completely resting, there might still be really, really unpredictable movement on the screen because the game is trying to make sense of this, uh, th this joystick that is supposed to be resting, but isn't. It's always sending information to the game. So if you're driving a car and you have the, the game's dead zone completely removed, your car might be driving all by itself because, it, because the controller is sending such sensitive information to the game and there's no resting position. So what you can do is you can apply the uh, anti-dead zone buffer, which allows you to reapply to, to whatever extent you want your own dead zone in the middle. And say if you want it smaller, you can do that. Maybe you want it uh, just uh, minus 0.10 on that side and plus 0.10 on the other side. That way you have a little bit of you have a little bit of wiggle room in the middle, but not as much as uh, minus 0.25 and plus plus 0.25. So that's how the anti dead zone works, and that's how the anti dead zone buffer works. Sorry, I got it wrong in the first video, but I'm correcting myself now. So I was also wrong about the cross shaped dead zone. So say this is your trackpad. Basically, what it does is it divides up the trackpad like a cross and it adds permanent dead zones and say variable dead zones. So if I was to illustrate the permanent dead zones, the, pla the places of the controller that are always dead zones, it would be the diagonals and the center. And all you're left with is these square shaped chunks along the horizontal and vertical axes. Now in red I'm going to do the variable dead zones. These dead zones change depending on your thumb's position on the trackpad. So the way this works, if you're in any of these two squares on the vertical axis, those become dead zones for the horizontal axis. So once you're over here, 
the horizontal axis sends no information. And once you're over here on the horizontal axis, these behave as dead zones for the vertical axis. So once you're in one of these two squares, the vertical axis stops sending information. And what this is for is for games that only want a direction pad with no overlap, and they just want you to be able to pick one direction, up, down, left, or right, that's it. And it's actually useful in some scenarios. So that's how the cross-shaped dead zone works. So another thing that I got wrong was the minimum joystick X and Y output values. Now, this is for mouse joystick. So when you're emulating a joystick using the trackpad, you're using mouse information and it's sending it to the game as joystick information so the game can interpret this information. However, you still have the game's built-in native dead zone to consider, right? And we went over this earlier. You have, say, minus 0.25 on one side, plus 0.25 on the other side, zero in the middle, plus one on this side, uh, minus one on that side. And this is a dead zone. This is the game's built-in dead zone for the joystick. Setting the minimum uh, joystick output value for each axis essentially allows you to reduce the dead zone yet again. You could make the minimum output in either direction, either left or right or up or down, you could make that minus 0.25 over here and plus 0.25 over here with plus one being over here and minus one being over there. De depending on where you set this, you can uh, reduce or increase the unresponsiveness of slow movements across the trackpad. So because of the game's built-in dead zone and because you're trying to emulate a joystick with a trackpad, you're going to have regions where if you're moving slowly, nothing will be happening in the game at all. And this is how you correct it by adjusting these values here on the screen, the uh, X and Y output value for the joystick. Now, if you set it too high, this can happen, where you have minus one on one side and you have plus one on the other side, but if you set it too high, you can have minus 0.50 over here and plus 0.50 over here. So now you've effectively taken 25% of the movement that you had before and just removed it. So this is gonna be extremely sensitive and you're probably not gonna be able to control this. You want to just be able to remove the dead zone, but if you increase this value too much, you could end up screwing yourself like this. So I think that's probably a better way to describe what's going on with these two values. You have to find a sweet spot, and uh, I hope that helped.